Good morning and welcome back to the latest edition of the Invest Talk Market Analysis for the week ending September 15th, 2023. This week I'm going to title the video, Option Expiration Brings Losses to Tech Stocks. Does it spark a trend? We're going to dig into the charts here in a little bit, but first I want to thank you all for tuning in and liking and subscribing this, to this channel as well as our podcast, Invest Talk. I'm host Justin Klein and we're going to jump right into it here. And this is a week about inflation. The inflation that it came in a little bit hotter than expected, but the market didn't react too much to it. So, you know, I always focus more on the market reaction than the headline numbers and the market uh, reaction was, was fairly mu muted. Now, core consumer price index, that uh, ticked up a little bit, 0.28%, but not to these levels. You know, last year it was in the, you know, 0.3 to 0.6 percent per month. Now, if we get another month of acceleration, I think that would be something to worry about here. Um, but this is just kind of a tick up into, you know, kind of what we were pre-pandemic. It's still on the high side, right? 0.28. This is June of 2019, uh, April 2019, uh, around these levels. But you know, we're 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 back into this kind of 0.1 to 0.3. Uh, month over month trend for inflation and that would bring you somewhere in the long, along the lines of the 2% inflation target and we've been there for 3 months so it's only been 3 months we will see whether that is sustainable uh, but definitely uh the the fed's probably watching that they they focus a lot on core consumer prices now the broad consumer price index that did accelerate uh, much higher to 0.63% that was on the back of energy remember remember core is stripping out the price of energy and energy prices have been up as of late so uh, we'll see how much the fed pays attention to that but typically they only focus mainly on core now the core producer price index that so the the cpi came out on wednesday this came out on thursday and Core CPI, that did tick down, actually, from 0.37 to 0.19. The produce price index, more broadly, did tick up, though, once again, because of energy prices to 0.74%. Now, industrial production, that had a weak showing on Friday, 0.38% positive. Uh, but overall, you know, long-term average is 0.26 month over month. So uh, more of, you know, not really much to write home about on that front. Uh, export prices, that also came out on Friday. That did tick up to 1.3%. To me, this was the hottest inflation reading, but it was less talked about than anything else. You know, we haven't seen positive, you know, over 1% growth in export prices since June of last year. So over a year. And you know, could this be a version of the mean? That's certainly possible. It's only a couple months now of being positive, but something uh, to take note of. Now, import prices also ticked up, and that is, that's, you know, the, the export prices, that's kind of to be expected because the dollar has been stronger. So the cost to buy our goods, our services is, it does tend to go up when the dollar is stronger. But import prices, that should be that should actually do the, have the opposite effect on import prices, but import prices to go 0.5%. Still not a trend that is super worrisome. You know, 2021 and 2022, we were consistently above 1% on both export and import prices month over month, but we're not quite there yet. So what you can see here is uh, uh, it, it, inflation is accelerating a bit to the upside, but not to a worrying level quite yet, especially on the core side, because most it's most it's driven by those uh, higher energy prices. Now, how did that feed into Fed expectations? Well, a week ago, we we're at 92 percent of a percent chance of a pause next week, and that is next week. The 20th is the Fed meeting, just four days away here, and now it's at 98 percent. So we're almost assured that there will be a pause next week, and then November. There was a 53% chance of a continued pause in November a week ago. Now we're at 72%. Still not a shoe in like it is next week, but uh, more dovish pricing uh, on, on the Fed's front. And that could be, um, you know, the jobs data continues to be weak as well. Uh, the December number, that's now a 60% chance of no more rate hikes this year. And what about a 40% chance that there will be at least one rate hike this year? So that's where we're at now. Okay, and I expect that to continue that way. Uh, and you would think that'd be weak, that would be negative for the dollar, and so far it has not been. So let's uh, let's pull over this chart. Uh, pull up this the daily. So the despite the fact that the do the uh, pricing of a Fed rate hike was <clears throat> became more dovish throughout the week, the dollar 
was strong. I thought that was definitely of note. Uh, now the NYSC, that one, it had uh, a really choppy week, sell-off on Friday. Uh, but overall, it was still an up week. We closed last week right here, uh, right about 15.877. And we closed the week at 15.973. So about 100 points on the NYSC. Very modest week overall, but certainly stronger than, say, the Qs. Let's pop over to the Qs. And that was a down week, okay? And we closed last week at, where we close? Where are we? 372.58, and this week it goes at 370, it's about 81. So down uh, a touch here. And look at this volume on Friday. You see this red bar right here? This was the highest volume we've seen since late August. Now, it wasn't giant, but if you, but it, but it was elevated. But if you look over at the S&P, that was even bigger. Look at this volume. We have not seen this volume since this sell-off day in, what's that, May, end of May? So the end of the, sorry, that was not the end of the first quarter, the end of the month, month ending, there tends to be a lot of volume there. Uh, Non-month ending, it was the last time was this day, uh, back in March, uh, right around the time of the uh, banking crisis. So that is of note. Now, one thing I will say, this was option X week, and it was it was quadruple witching, meaning uh, there is uh, it was quarterly option X as well, as opposed to just monthly. There are quarterly options, and those expired. And that is, there's a lot of positioning, jockeying for for positioning on those days, kind of game playing going on. So it's hard to take too much from uh, Friday, but it well, it's a, certainly of note. And to see if we get some follow through to the downside. And, you know, our position is being unwound. There's a lot of gamma squeezing going on, especially in the tech space. And if that's being unwound because of, uh, because of, uh, be because of option X and they're not being rolled out to future months, meaning maybe liquidity is drying up and therefore, you know, they're not rolling that into future uh bets on the upside of the market and taking that notional value of options off the table, that could mean dealer positioning unwinds. That means they sell their positions and uh, that looked like what it was uh, in the market on Friday. Here's the XLK, certainly looking weak. You know, we tested the 100-day moving average, try to get a bounce right up to resistance here, right? Where this broke down, that's resistance. And we rolled over pretty convincingly. And so that next support around the 100-day is not going to be great. You're, the SMH is already at the 100-day. That also had a similar pattern here. So I would be careful here in the tech land. Uh, there's certainly some stronger names like Amazon. There are some weaker names. Google is another strong name. Uh, Apple is definitely one of the weaker names uh, within this space. And let's look at the, some of the other uh, their smaller names. Netflix, uh, definitely the weakest. Disney continues to, uh, or actually it's rallied recently. That's interesting. Uh, we'll see if that gets some traction. Uh, what else? What are some of the other big tech? Oh, NVIDIA. I want to look at NVIDIA. Yeah, NVIDIA is starting to show some cracks here. And obviously this is new, the bell, new bellwether within the chip space. AMD, since this you know, the AI surge early in the summer, has been uh, fairly weak. You have Micron, that one is uh, relatively strong, so that's good. So, you know, broad demand for memory is, is solid, um, but uh, those those high-end chips are starting to see uh, the, the froth coming out of the AI space overall. And that's kind of what you're, you're seeing here. You know, even Intel. Intel has been relatively strong, and Intel isn't really caught up in the AI space. So what you're seeing here is, is there strength in this, in, in basic computers, basic devices, and that's where the momentum is. Less in the AI. Has it been overhyped? I think that's certainly uh, possible. So uh, overall, you're getting a, an environment where uh, equities look to be rolling over. Now, the positive is the VIX isn't getting much traction. That remains relatively low. You are also not getting a credit event here. So let's go SH, there we go, SH1G to this. Why? There we go. So once again, short-term junk to short-term treasuries, and that's not breaking down. So it's not giving you this sign that there's some uh, credit event in the offing. And that's why if you look at my favorite ratio, growth to value, that did 
have a pretty negative day on Friday and on volume. So we'll see if this gets, you know, breaks this 100 day. And that would mean that this trend that was in place all last year of value outperforming growth is, which is now long in the tooth, right? We had this rally all year and it's, uh, we talked about this pausing really since June. If that rolls over in earnest, you could get a, a definitely a neg negative trend in equities overall, uh, just because, you know, the, the uh, broad indices are weighted towards those growthier names. So uh, that's why I think for the rest of the year, I actually see more of rotation in the markets. Uh, you're going to have sell-offs, you're going to have rallies, and really the, the S&P hasn't gone anywhere since mid-June. Okay, um, so that's the market that you should kind of expect, I think, until we get to the Santa Claus uh, rally. I think we do get some sort of late year-end lift just because equities broadly are up, um, and that tends to feed into the, the Santa Claus rally. Uh, but, you know, we still have two months. We have two months before we get into that season, and that could still mean a lot of uh, you know, sell-offs and rotation in the market. You know, the energy space, that did have a negative day on Friday, but look at the relative strength here. Uh, very, very strong. Industrials had a fairly decent day on Friday. That has pulled back, but still above the 100-day moving average. Um, so the big question is, will tech stocks really break to the downside in the coming weeks? I think that's certainly possible. There's a lot of froth in that space, and the 10-year continues to stay elevated. Look at this. Uh, you know, we had this, uh, this was on Wednesday. So we had a sell off in the 10 year, talked about that bad inflation data on Friday. That was the headline. And, but the market didn't react that way because we, the, the 10 year rate was actually down a, a one and a half basis points on the day. So you would think if it was bad inflation data, you'd have interest rates higher. Now you did get that on Thursday and Friday on other inflation data, but that was talked about less. So it just goes to show you that just because someone says it in in the media the, that it's written about doesn't mean it's true. It doesn't mean the market is reacting in that particular way. And to me, the market saw the Wednesday data as dovish and the Thursday and Friday data, especially the Friday data, as more hawkish, which is uh, my takeaway based on just looking at the raw data. So interest rates are elevated. Obviously, that tends to be bad for the growth of the market. It hasn't been, well, you could say, in June, right, this started to really move to the upside, and that's where the growth side of the market started to lose its momentum. And the big question, I think, is just when will that break be? And the break Friday could be the start of that broader trend. We shall see. You want to see some follow through, especially after an option next week, but that's kind of what I am seeing. Now, let's get into uh, I want to get into this chart GDX to the GLD. So we know that gold miners tend to outperform. Uh, the raw gold price when you're in a bull market uh, or when, when things are, are good uh, for gold. And that's starting to, to take off now here about the 50 moving average. We'll see if we can get above this 200 day. I think that would be the big tell here. Silver to gold ratio, try, try to break out, then it try to break down. Now it's back in a range. <laughs> so, uh, you know, this is still a mixed picture on the silver to gold ratio. And the gold prices in general, you know, they ticked up uh, a bit on the week. Uh, and this is just a controlled pullback before that move higher. And I think a lot's going to depend on what, will, what, would, what are the economic data points that we see in the back half of the year and whether inflation or, excuse me, a recession is uh, likely uh, next year. And if we continue to see weak economic data like we have with the jobs data going forward, uh, that's going to mean the market is going to price in a more dovish Fed going forward. And I think you'll see gold prices uh, really take off. So I think that's what you're likely to see in the back half of the year. Uh, I think that's about it. Oh, I wanted to get into, I wanted to touch on this real quick in relation to gold. Look at commodities. I still... I think this is uh, the most undertold story in the markets right now. Commodity prices are moving nicely higher, really, since June. Uh, another reason why maybe uh, you're seeing that value to, to, to growth to value uh, transition is broadly, you're seeing commodity prices pretty strong. Obviously, oil has gone up. Here's USO. So that's a big part of it. Um, but just in general, look at uranium. 
uranium is uh, taking off. Here's the uranium price. Uh, and that has been big in the news. So I, I really think that this is an environment where, yes, the Fed could want to cut rates next year. And I think they will cut rates next year, but they're going to have a tough time doing that in a big way, going back to zero percent interest rates or anything like that. I think they could, you know, could they cut from, you know, five and a half now to four? I think that's kind of what you're, you're, you're probably going to see. Not a huge rate cutting cycle, but a careful rate cutting cycle next year because of what's happening in the commodity space and that inflation is going to be sticky higher. Um, but in the near term, I'm more bullish on commodities, starting to see those take off, uh, bullish on the value side of the market. That's starting to, to gain some traction. The only place I would say is, is relatively weak are the banks. There's KVE. Look at that weakness here. You know, we had that rally, and, and that's where I see uh, a place you want to avoid on the value side of the market. Okay. All right. Well, uh, I think that's it. Uh, I think I covered a lot today. I appreciate you all tuning in. A reminder that the contents of the video are for educational purposes only and should not be construed as a recommendation to buy or sell security or to participate in investment strategy. The views are my own and do not represent those of KPP Financial or those associated. Have a wonderful weekend.